I wish to thank very warmly the Academic Council of the Institute of Chemical Technology for conferring upon me a Doctorate of Science Honoris Causa. I would like to salute here the high level of teaching and of research activities in chemical sciences pursued at this renowned institution. Through this honorary degree, the institution also recognizes the role and the vitality of a science, chemistry. Indeed, chemistry plays a central role both in, by its place in natural sciences and in knowledge, and by its economic importance and presence everywhere. It tends to be forgotten, but it gets unnoticed because it does not advertise itself so much. It does not really show, it, show off so much. But without chemistry, many achievements we consider as very basic would not be recognized. It does not advertise itself, but it has realized spectacular progress in therapeutic exploits, feats in space, marvels of technology, and so forth. It contributes to meeting humanity's needs in food and medication, in clothing and shelter, in energy and raw materials. It supplies materials for physics and industry. It makes models and substrates for biology and pharmacology. It develops properties and processes for science and technology. Chemistry is the science of matter and of its transformation. It plays a primordial role in our understanding of the processes of matter, in our capacity to act upon them, to modify them, to control them, and to invent new expressions of them. Chemistry is also a science of transfers, a communication, a relay between the simple and the complex, between the laws of physics and those of life, between the basic and the applied. In its object, the molecule and the material, chemistry expresses its creativity. Chemical synthesis has the power to produce new molecules and new materials with novel properties. They are new indeed because they did not exist before being created at the hands of the chemist by the recomposition of atomic arrangements into novel and infinitely varied combinations and structures. Chemistry has been evolving over the years towards an increase in complexity and in diversity in both structural and functional features, from simple molecules to molecular populations, from small molecular structures to large molecular architectures, from molecular properties to supramolecular functions. Thus, one witnesses an emergence of a chemistry of systems and functions on the basis of a chemistry of species and reactions. Beyond the molecule lies supramolecular chemistry, our field of research, the domain of intermolecular relationships, a sort of molecular sociology, where molecular interactions define the interspecific bond, the action and the reaction, in short, the behavior of molecular populations. Supramolecular chemistry strives for an increased control over the structures and functions of molecular assemblies of large entities and materials, in addition to the great interest for the exploration of the interface with molecular biology, it also defi definitely emphasizes abiotic, non-natural species, figments of the imagination of the chemist, possessing a desired chemical or physical property. It opens wide the door to the creative imagination of the chemist at the meeting point of chemistry with biology and physics. Like the artist, the chemist engraves into matter the products of his or her creative imagination. The stone, the sounds, the words do not contain the works that the sculptor, the composer, the writer expresses from them. Similarly, the chemist creates original molecules, new materials, novel properties from the elements provided by our universe. 
The essence of chemistry is not only to discover, but to invent and above all to create. The book of chemistry is not just to be read, but to be written. The score of chemistry is not just to be played, it must be composed. Thus chemistry is a science and an art, but chemistry is also an industry. Each scientific component of the discipline has its industrial counterpart. It has for this reason a very marked impact on economic and social life. It is not surprising that chemistry is called upon more and more often to face a number of new and increasingly important socio-economic imperatives associated with geopolitical phenomena. The resolution of pressing economic and social problems cannot be envisaged without fundamental discoveries to open the ways to new processes. It is thus a twofold challenge, intellectual and technical. To meet it becomes ever more fascinating. One must have the courage to match the dangers, the ambition to meet the challenges, whether they originate from the abyss of our ignorance or from the specter of our crisis. Beyond the general progress of knowledge and the technological development, the most important impact chemistry and even more so science in general can and must have on our society is the spirit science implies, the scientific, the rational approach towards the world, towards the life, towards society. Science education in our schools, colleges and universities, as well as for the general public, must therefore be a major priority so as to train the researchers and discoverers of tomorrow, to lift irrational fears and rejections, to develop the scientific spirit, the scientific attitude, in order to fight the obscure, the deceitful, the irrational. A very present, actually important issue concerns the situation of the scientist with respect to ethics and the society. It is my personal strong opinion that the scientist has first of all general responsibility to the truth and only thereafter is their responsibility to society. These perspectives for the future of science, for our future, have already been expressed in the most fitting terms by this quintessence, this symbol of the artist, the scientist, and the technologist, Leonardo da Vinci. Many of you must know Leonardo da Vinci, I suppose. When he wrote, where nature finishes to produce its own species, man begins using natural things, by this I mean the elements in our universe, in harmony with his very nature, these are the basic laws of physics, to create an infinity of species. These are very strong words for an artist speaking to scientists, so to say. So the development of science is an irreversible process, a process which cannot be turned back. We cannot turn it back. We must walk the way from the conquest of knowledge to the control of our own destiny. Thank you.